Streams change the surface of the earth more than any other surface process. They do this by the processes of erosion, transporting that eroded material, and finally depositing it. The sediment deposited by a river is called alluvium. One stream can do all these processes, but it does it different parts. At the steep headwaters of a stream, you have a very high erosion rate. Along its trunk, you have both erosion and deposition. And at the very gentle mouth, you have only deposition. We can call the steep headwaters young, the middle mature, and the mouth we can refer to as being old. However, one river, given enough time, can go through all these processes. So a mountain river can wear away the mountain till it exists no longer, and the entire landscape is flat. This peneplain is the result of so much river erosion that there's almost no gradient left at all. All of the rivers that would drain this peneplain would be old. Peneplains are very rare, however, because plate tectonics has a nice way of lifting the land back up into the air. So the earth doesn't look as boring as this area in northern Canada. The river valley will change through time because of this erosion and deposition. You can see the youngest of the river valleys it has a very high gradient. It hasn't eroded the mountain away, so it has a high elevation, giving it a high gradient or slope. Or is the mature river has eroded away the mountain and now has a very low gradient. The other obvious difference is the width and the shape of the valley. The young valley is narrow and deep. It has a V shape, whereas a mature river has a very, very broad shape, almost a V. Looking at a young river, notice that we have waterfalls and rapids. If you see any white water, you know you've got a young river. Over a period of time, the waterfall, located right here, has moved back. That movement is called headward erosion because it's eroding toward the headwaters. Eventually, every waterfall will erode itself out of existence. The other obvious change happening to this river is that it is down cutting. This river has only bedrock. There's no sediment deposited by this young river. These are all young rivers. You see the white water and you see a nice V-shaped valley. Eventually, of course, the river slows down and starts depositing some sediment. First, it might be just a sandbar on the inside of a slight curve, but eventually that sediment becomes a wide flood plain. Plain because it's flat, flood because it's covered in water during floods. If you have a floodplain, then the stream starts to loop along it. These loops are called meanders. And when a meander hits the side of the bedrock, it erodes it by lateral erosion. But we're also starting to form some tributaries. So floodplain with meander, development of tributaries, and lateral erosions are the hallmarks of a mature river. We're standing on the bedrock looking down at the floodplain. And here you can see it has eroded into the bedrock, making the stream valley wider. Here we have a good example of some more meanders. When a meander cuts itself off, you have what's known as an oxbow lake. By the time a river gets very old, the floodplain is so wide that a meander almost never gets to erode away any of the bedrock again. Also notice we have a few more features here. On the side of the river, every time it floods, it deposits a little more sediment on either side of the stream channel. That becomes a natural levee. The tributaries have a hard time getting through to the stream, so very often they will parallel the stream for a while before they join it. Those tributaries are called Yazoo streams or Yazoo tributaries. Some of these oxbow lakes are drying up and it becomes very, very swampy. So here we have one of the best examples of an old river and that is the lower Mississippi. The floodplain is gigantic. And here we have a river called the Yazoo River. 
which has given its name to those tributaries that flow along the floodplain. This is a natural levee. It doesn't look all that impressive, but all it has to do is be a little bit higher than the floodplain around it, and it prevents the water in the floodplain from draining very well. We often take the sides of the river with their natural levees, and we make a much larger levee, an artificial levee, to prevent the rivers from flooding. You can see the swampiness along the floodplain of the Mississippi River. This back swamp probably received a recent flood because you can see the high water mark on the trees. By the way, if you have trees, you call it a swamp, and if you have any grasses, you call it a marsh. Along the Mississippi, they tend to refer to the swampy areas as the bayou. Here's a summary of all the features I just talked about. Whether a river is young, mature, or old, it's a gradual process that could happen in different parts of one stream, or it could happen to one stream over time, making a young river become mature, and finally, an old river.